Hello and welcome to this edition of Please Note from the State Emergency Operations Center of North Carolina Emergency Management. I'm with Mike Spurberry, who is the director, and with Wade Chestnut, who is our diocesan coordinator. And we are delighted to be here at the Center of Operations. And thank you for having us, Mike. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Wade, for arranging this, <coughs> for, for, for accepting this. It's exciting. Well, where are we? What goes on here? Well, you know, this is the State Emergency Operations Center. When we're activated, um, we bring in what we call our state emergency response team, which basically incorporates all of state government, every agency, a huge amount of uh, volunteers that are active during uh, disasters, uh, such as the Methodist, uh, the Baptist men, the Salvation Army, American Red Cross, and we get together in order to respond to whatever disaster and, um, and then begin the recovery process. Currently, with no disaster happening, we're working hard to make sure that we're prepared. Mm -hmm. and, and part of the uh, preparation that people can do includes some interesting things, like those of us who are real tech people. I was learning about some of the resources that are available to folks. Correct. Uh, we have something called the Ready NC app that you can download on your Droid and your iPhone. And with that app, uh, you can get everything from uh, the traffic, the current situation on traffic, evacuation routes, uh, open shelters, uh, and we'll also provide you with guidance on how to prepare for any type of emergency. Mm -hmm. um, there's also readync.org that you can go onto the internet and sit at your computer and learn more about it as well, maybe a little bit better for your eyes. What else would you want folk to know and to be ready for and be prepared? <clears throat> it's spring and we know. I, I think, you know, there's three main things that I would sort of I'm not going to say preach, but I would tell everybody. You go ahead and preach, brother. Okay. <laughs> and so everybody needs to have their own uh, personal readiness kit. Things like that would have important papers, uh, medicines, uh, food, clothing, so that they'll be prepared to basically evacuate quickly and then be able to carry on with their lives with their family uh, for at least 72 hours, I would say. The second thing is, is that if you do have a plan to evacuate, well, you need to have a plan to evacuate. Where are you going to go? And, um, and so if you say like your family split up, some are at work, some are at home, some are at school, you need to have a plan of where you would all come together and meet up. And so I think that's very important. And then the third thing is, is you need to all, at all times be situationally aware of what the weather's doing, what's happening around you. Uh, or if it's a technical hazard, such as a hazardous material spill, something like that, or, you know, uh, you want to maintain awareness, and you do that through staying in touch with local media. So three things, have your own personal survival kit. Number two is uh, know where to, you're going to get together should you have to evacuate, where do you all get together, your family. And the third thing is staying situationally aware through local media. And so all of that um, helps you to be prepared. The app gets you information that you need. And then if you have a personal emergency, you're supposed to dial 911 anyway, right? Well, no, sir. We, no? Don't, we do not recommend calling 911 unless you do have like a medical emergency. Ah, okay. And so, or a crime being committed, something like that. But um, we don't recommend that. You can, might imagine during an emergency, uh, if everybody was calling 911, it would be overloaded very quickly. Right. And people that were having uh, issues like a heart attack or something like that, right. that, you know, you might not catch those folks. So um, we recommend self-reliance and so uh, and and also knowing what your plan is. Right. That is fantastic. Thank you for what you do. Hey, thank you, thank, sir. Thank God for you. <laughs> and this guy over here, you know it. Yes, sir, I do. Yeah, Wade, what do you do here? We know who you are from church. What do you? I'm involved with NC Boad, of course. Uh -huh. the, the, what does that mean? <laughs> that is the volunteer organizations active in disaster. There's, there's one in each state, all 50 states. There's a national group that's based in Washington, and so there's one state in North Carolina. I'm service vice president of that group. As a representative, of course, of the diocese of the, the Episcopal Diocese of North Carolina, so uh -huh. I mean we're we're right in the center of it. And so when there's a disaster and we're on the ground, we're in one of the rooms back here, uh, just monitoring any needs that any of the other groups may have. And, and there's a very sophisticated uh, 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 computer system called Web EOC that we can dial into from home, from work, from obviously here. And 
all of the groups that Mike just referenced have, are on that system to where if there's a need for something that we, as it relates to the human services side of, of the organization, need and, and, and the, the church can provide it, then we would see it, it would come through that, we would then activate uh, whatever uh, resources we have to, to be able to make that happen. I can tell you that North Carolina and the state emergency response team here in North Carolina, without the Episcopalian uh, diocese and, and the, the Baptist men and all the rest of them, we could not successfully respond to and recover from a disaster. Couldn't do it. We're so proud of our volunteer organizations here in North Carolina. From the State Emergency Operations Center of the North Carolina Emergency Management, God bless you and keep the faith.